good everyone? It's Steve from Sneaker Tech Talk back with another video today. And for today's video, we're gonna take a look at the performance review of the newly released Puma MB2s. So as far as the traction goes on the Puma MB2s, they are inspired by a feather traction pattern as you can see here with all of the designs. It's almost honestly like a herringbone traction pattern. It's very aggressive, but it's pretty shallow and I wouldn't say overly soft, but it's definitely softer than last year's Puma MB1s. And there's a ton of feedback with this traction as well because this is very squeaky, very loud on court. On clean floors, you're gonna wanna wipe this every three or four plays because these do collect quite a bit of dust. On dirty floors, however, you're gonna wanna wipe these every second play because they just collect a ton of dust with that translucent outsole. But honestly, forward movements and back movements and side to side, even when they're dirty, these will have you covered. But I would say probably don't bring these outdoors because like I said, they're not overly soft, but this, this uh, translucent outsole does kind of move a bit when you go to move it with your finger. But I will maintain that Puma Basketball or Puma Hoops has the best translucent variety of materials currently out on the market, better than Nike, better than Adidas, better than Under Armour. They do a fantastic job. So whatever they're doing here with their translucent rubber, keep it up. But as far as the traction goes here on the Puma MB2s, I'm gonna have to give these a very reliable and pretty good, honestly, eight and a half out of 10. So as far as the cushioning goes here on the Puma MB2s, for me, this is an upgrade over the ones. You still have that very dense nitro foam here running almost 360 degrees around the shoe. It's pretty dense and honestly it has a nice bounce to it when you land on, especially the heel, because it's, I wouldn't say it's overly high off the ground, it's a lot lower in the forefoot, but it has a ton of impact protection in the heel. And then very similar to what Nike does with their Zoom airbags embedded within the midsole, is they cord out a portion in the heel and the forefoot of the Puma MB2s. If you have a head over to Wear Tester's channel, they do have some videos or pictures showing that. And they have these little pucks in the heel and forefoot that are nitro foam as well. And for me, it just offered that extra bounce and impact protection, and it just offered that nice feedback within the shoe. So I think Puma did a fantastic job. The overall foam compound, again, on the outside is a little bit more dense, but those pucks in the heel and forefoot, for me, they were a little bit softer, and it was an upgrade over the one. One thing I will mention as well is I've been playing in the Puma MB1s for almost a year now and the foam compound has not broken down at all. It feels just as good as the first day I played in them. It does take a little bit of time to break in and then it softens up nicely, especially in the heel. It's not super low to the ground in the forefoot, but for me, it's a really nice blend of impact protection and a bit of court feel up in the front. And then again, like I said, that heel and forefoot puck they installed here in the Puma MB2s is a fantastic upgrade. So for me, as far as the cushioning goes in the Puma MB2s, I'm gonna have to give them a pretty decent eight out of 10. Again, for me, it's an upgrade over the ones. So as far as the materials go on the Puma MB2s, it's not a huge upgrade over the ones, but they did slim it down quite nicely. It's not as thick and it doesn't take as long to break in with the twos over the ones. So you're gonna have this screen mesh that kind of runs throughout the shoe. And then a bunch of fuse overlays here. You can see the Puma stripe right here. And then I believe these fuse overlays are supposed to mimic feathers. And then you have a really nice fuse toe ran for extra durability here at the toe. And then on the medial side, some more fuse here with the term rare. So again, the materials aren't anything special, but after that first 30 to 60 minutes of playing in them, for me, they broke in quicker than the ones. And then the tongue is very nicely padded as well with some foam. And then right near the midfoot here, it is very perforated. So up the middle, it's pretty breathable, but around the rest of the shoe, it does keep the heat trapped in. So as far as the materials go, I wouldn't say it's a huge upgrade over the ones, but for me, they just broke in a little quicker and they're very durable as well. So I think if you took these outdoors, you really wouldn't have any issues as far as this material holding up. And it's very reminiscent of the early 2010 Nike basketball shoes where they were using a lot of those fuse overlays on the shoes. So for me, as far as how these play on court, I don't have a ton of issues, but keep in mind these do run for 130 USD, 150 here in Canada. So you're not gonna get anything premium, 
but as far as the materials go, I would have to give these a pretty decent 7 out of 10. So as far as the weight goes for the Puma MB2s, this is a US size 10.5, and, and these come in lighter than the Puma MB1s at 15.6 ounces, whereas the ones were almost 17 ounces. So they did a pretty good job as far as shaving off some weight here in the Puma MB2s. So as far as the fit goes on the Puma MB2s, I would say stick to true to size. And even if you're a wide footer, unless you have an extremely wide foot, maybe go up half a size. But for me, the length of the, of the shoe actually fit a little bit longer than the ones. In the ones, my foot was almost touching the end of the shoe. Whereas in the twos, my toe was sitting right about here. So I had about half width of a thumb at the end of the shoe of extra space but it really wasn't an issue because this shoe locks you down when you crank these laces down. Your foot's not going anywhere. So as far as the fit, even if you're a wide footer, I would recommend going true to size or just trying them on in stores. But if you can only, only order online, if you're a really wide footer, maybe go up half a size, but I would caution you might have a little bit too much extra length at the end of the shoe. But for me, as far as the fit goes, I enjoyed it. It broke in quicker than the Puma MB1s. And for me, I want a shoe that breaks in quickly. So as far as the fit goes on the Puma MB2s, I would have to give these a pretty solid 8.5 out of 10. So as far as the support goes in the Puma MB2s, just like last year with the ones, this shoe is extremely supportive. Starting at the back of the shoe, it does have a very rigid internal heel counter. And there's actually a second one on this with that logo here with the wings logo at the back another external heel counter here at the back of the shoe and then this fuse overlay right here is a pretty thick fuse overlay and it helps prevent your foot from spilling over the side of the shoe at the back again this is a mid-cut shoe lamello ball prefers mid cuts over highs or lows so you do get that mid-cut variety here in the puma mb2s and then working your way down from that you do have a traditional lacing system with the laces just running through the upper but when you crank them down it really harnesses and keeps your foot locked in at the back of the shoe which is exactly what you want within a basketball shoe and then this upper with the screen mesh and the fuse overlays with this uh, translucent rubber running just a little bit up the side of the shoe on your hard lateral cuts your foot's not going to spill over at all on this shoe Puma has done a fantastic job using these materials with that translucent outsole running up from preventing your foot sliding over the footbed and then working your way to the bottom the forefoot is a very wide and stable base and if you see the overall orientation of the shoe it's a pretty flat shoe so a very wide and stable base and then at the midfoot you do have a plastic shank plate embedded within the midsole so Puma has done a fantastic job yet again with the torsional rigidity. There is a little bit of flex at the forefoot, but overall, I would say this is the second best supportive basketball shoe on the market right now. The best basketball shoe right now for support, in my opinion, is the Jordan Zion 2, but here with the Puma MB2s, it's not far behind. So as far as the support goes on the Puma MB2s, I would have to give them a very solid nine out of 10. And then one thing I really wanted to touch on quickly is the overall design of the Puma MB2s. I think these are a little bit more streamlined and futuristic looking versus the ones. I still love the ones, but I really like the design cues and the overlays here on the Puma MB2s and just the overall features. They added that rare on the outsole again, but it just looks a little bit more futuristic and aggressive. So Jeremy over at Puma Hoops is doing a fantastic job designing a ton of their footwear over at Puma. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what they have cooking up over for 2023. But again, the price point of these being 130 USD, 150 here over in Canada, I really think you can't go wrong if you decide to pick up a pair of the Puma MB2s for basketball. So that's gonna do it for today's performance review on the Puma MB2s. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of LaMelo Ball's second basketball shoe with Puma. I think Jeremy and Puma Hoops as a whole has been doing a fantastic job the last couple years. And I'm at heart, I'm a Jordan and Nike guy, so it was a little hard for me to jump into the Puma Hoops realm as far as what they're offering. But honestly, it's a fantastic shoe. And I think if you haven't tried out what they're offering currently on the market with these, the Puma MB1s, the TRC Blaze Court, 
you're really missing out, especially at the price points of like between 80 and 130 USD. They have some great price points as far as basketball shoes that perform just as good or better than some of the other offerings out there that cost twice as much. But again, the overall support features, traction, cushion, materials are nothing special, but they break in quicker than the ones. And especially at that price point at 130 USD, you really can't go wrong. And like I said, the fit is true to size. Unless you're a wide footer, an extremely wide footer in my opinion, you could go up half a size. But that's going to cover the performance review of the Puma MB2s. As always, stick around for the end of the video where I'll have these on court. Check out my Instagram at 23MJ88 as it is an extension of my YouTube channel with all my pickups and behind the scenes footage of me on court testing out these shoes. But like I said, stick around for the on-court footage, and until next time, peace.